Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about making the joke. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> I want to watch the light. Right. Anyways, uh, welcome, friends, family. Thank you for joining us. Whether you are here in person or you are joining us online, we get to gather together and we get to worship Jesus, and that is stinking awesome. Uh, today we are continuing in our dangerous prayers. Uh, today we're going to be uh, praying, uh, God, break my heart. Um, and that's a very dangerous prayer because... Some of, the stuff Some of the stuff that can come along with it, but you, with know, it, but you know, we pray, when we pray, God, break, God, break my heart, we might, we might be the solution that God wants to fix what is broken. And so, um, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, however, uh, when breakings come, it's sometimes the, the greatest blessings from God that we get to see. So, grab your Bibles, uh, turn to Jeremiah chapter 8. That's right, we're going to be in the Old, Old Testament. Grab a bulletin with the sermon notes on the back, or if you are at home, you can go to our website and find the sermon notes underneath our sermon uh, tab. Um, so yeah, just uh, let's get ready for God's Word in this challenging prayer. And as we get ready for God's Word, uh, make sure if you are at home that you've prepared your communion stuff. Um, so go ahead, go ahead and get your juice, get your Cheez-Its, um, Cheez -Its um, the Cheez-Its of Nazareth. And, uh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so go ahead and get, get what you're using for communion. If you're here, make sure that you have the, um, the packet cups that we have downstairs. Um, otherwise, uh, that time of church will be coming up soon, so join us for that. Uh, moving on, um, I want to talk about giving. Obviously, that's something that we, we talk about every week here. Um, just that we are encouraged to do it. It's how we kind of fulfill certain areas of ministry here at uh, Cedar Rapids Christian Church. Um, so you can pay online. We have online on the website. Uh, if you're here in person, you can drop off the check or you can mail it to us. And remember, this is for, you know, not for, if you're busy today, don't worry about that. That is that is not um, something we expect from you. Services are a gift to you. Uh, so just join us and enjoy that. Um, moving on, also on our website, we have a prayer and connect um, tab that you can click on that we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what's going on, the things that maybe you need comfort for uh, and, and shared prayer and that. And maybe there are things that are going well and you, you want to lift that up and you want other people to lift that up with you in praise to God, thanking Him. Um, so go ahead and click that tab. Let us know what's going on in your lives. Yep. And uh, just another reminder that Wednesday nights are happening. Uh, we are meeting here from 6.30 to 7.30. We got our kids ministry meeting again. We're going through uh, uh, Genesis and, and having a really fun time doing that. Um, we got the adult Bible study taking place in the fellowship hall. They're still going through Genesis as well. At 5.30, uh, Mike is on Facebook Live, so join in with us on there. Uh, Mike is going through the book of Acts. It's really encouraging and really in informative, so I just encourage you to join Mike on Facebook Live, on our Facebook page at 5.30 on Wednesdays. Uh, speaking of our life groups, uh, because Wednesday night has a... A, a life group we have one that meets on Tuesday nights. Um, talk with Mike if, for details and how they're meeting and the system that they're using because they're doing it online. And then we have our Thursday morning ladies Bible study who meets in the library from 9:30 till about 11:30. And I believe they're still going through the parables. Um, but uh, from what I talk with the ladies, they're really enjoying it. Uh, so find uh, Kathy Thomas and she'll give you all the details that you need. Um, Mike, if you want to give them uh, some fun news. Uh, real quick, we, after our recent elder meeting, we decided um, to, the middle to the middle section, just the middle section, we're going to add more chairs in, in between those rows. Um, part of that, it was just a decision that um, it looks more inviting when people bring friends and when there's guests, when there's room for them. Uh, because we actually have filled the room a couple times, and um, it was just with the vaccine and... and uh, people are already having it less is less likely to get it again. Um, it was a decision that was made. The outside wings will uh, still remain spaced apart. So if you're still uh, worried and cautious about it, you'll still be able to socially distance. Um, with that, I believe that's our lot. We got a couple more seconds. Nick, I have nothing special. Nick, you have five seconds. What's your go-to colored shirt? Go to color shirt. Gray. Gray. Okay. Let's get ready. let's get ready for worship.
Good morning, Cedar Rapids Christian Church. We are glad to see everybody here and everyone who is joining us online. We thank you. And uh, we are going to start in a time of worship and praise. So let's go ahead and stand and just uh, lift up a prayer. Jesus, uh, we come before you. We come before your throne, and we are so grateful for the sacrifice that you made. That is why we celebrate. We are grateful that, that you defeated death and rose on that third day. And that is why we celebrate on, on Sunday every week, that first day of the week. It's how we want to start our week. And it's, it's the energy and the passion and the love that we want to carry uh, throughout the week as we go into the world. We go back to our lives. Uh, keep yourself, keep your Father on our minds so that we can glorify you in that. Right now, we just want to lift up praises to you, thankfulness and and. And in prayers, and it is your uh, your name that we pray, Amen. Create in me a clean, clean heart. Create in me a work of art. Create in me a miracle. Some again create with me yet you're not finished with me yet by your power I can change I can change you're not finished with me yet and you're not finished with me yet and you're not finished with me yet by your power I can change I can change you're not finished with me yet moment to greet your neighbors, say hi to them, let them know you love them. If you are joining us on live stream, please drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. The, the socially distanced greetings. <laughs> Just waving from six feet apart, that's all. when I am weak, you are the truth. 
treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burden, lay down your shame, and all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer come, oh you're not too far, lay down your down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary and rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. To lay down your burden, lay down your shame, and all who are broken, lift up your face. The wanderer come, oh, you're not 
A moment we're going to hear from Nick as he comes up and encourages us to start making um, another dangerous prayer. This one, praying for brokenness, surrendering ourselves to God. Um, because sometimes we, we build up our identity, we build up our personality, we build up all these things, um, and those things sometimes aren't what God wants from us. And when we pray for brokenness, that is... God chipping away, destroying our illusions that we've made of our ideal self and allows him to recreate us into what he wants us to be, to shape us how he wants to use us. Um, and I just thought this song worked so well. Um, many of you know the history of Amazing Grace, the idea of someone who was broken by the things that he did and, and sought restitution and realized that as terrible as he was, God could reshape him to be used for his purpose. And he wrote the, the, these, these verses, um, this poem, uh, Amazing Grace, and it just, even to today, it has power um, when we hear it. We, we see the beautiful message of his poem that it doesn't matter what he did in the past, what matters is how he moves forward with God. And I just, I think it fits. Um, so we're going to be doing this song. Um, just let that resonate on your heart. grace that's on my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed 
my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood is mercy. shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Well, I'm going to tell a little story here. Uh, from 1976, I was 15 years old. Uh, my dad and stepmom had just gotten married, and they went out of town. And my dad had a 73 Camaro. And uh, that's what I learned to drive is. Uh, I always I had my permit, so I always drove. And uh, well, while they were out of town, me and my, my stepsister, same age as me, got to stay home. So they were trusting us. And uh, <laughs> I uh, sort of violated that trust. I uh, had a friend over, and we took the, uh, I took the keys to the Camaro and uh, went for a joyride around the neighborhood. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. Uh, I hit a parked car, took off, tried to hide the car, and became very apparent that I didn't hide it good enough because an hour later, a knock was on the door and it was the police. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I admitted what happened and, and uh, so they, they made me call my, my dad at, this is probably 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, I knew that wasn't going to be pleasant. And uh, 
He said, well, we'll take care of it when we get home. So, you know, I, I knew I was in big trouble. I had violated their trust. It took, a, it took a long time to gain that trust back, but after the punishment, it was actually never mentioned again. I knew they had not forgotten, but out of love, they chose not to hold it against me any longer. In the same, same way, God chooses not to use our sins and failures against us. In his grace and mercy, he forgives us. How does he do this? His son, son Jesus, took all of our sins past, present, and future on the cross. Let's remember this awesome gift to us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for choosing not to hold our sins against us and help us live in the freedom of your mercy and grace. Through Jesus, amen. Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. So good to see your beautiful faces on this bright, snowy morning. Uh, thank you for those who have joined us online. It is super cool that we get to gather together, whether in person or in the comforts of your own house. Um, it's just great that, that, that God's word is not confined to these four walls, but yet it is ever moving, it's ever living, and it's just going to the far reaches with the advancement of technology. And so that's just that's just something to, to praise God for, that he has 
provided that. Um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 8. That's where we're going to be in. Um, it's one of the prophets, so it's in the Old Testament. If you don't know where it's at, look in your table of contents, and it'll tell you what page it's on. And then just find the big eight, and we'll be there. Uh, but Jeremiah is going to introduce to us the prayer that we're going to be talking to, uh, about today. And I invite you, if you are daring, to pray this prayer every single day this week. And this might just be one of the most dangerous prayers that we pray. Because I want to warn you, you will not like this prayer. And the reason you will not like this prayer is because what this prayer is going to cause within your heart. What this prayer is going to cause within your mind. It's not a very common prayer. It's a very dangerous prayer. And yes, we have the option to refuse to pray this dangerous prayer. Okay? It's not, it's not a prayer that is consistent with uh, 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 the Americanized church version of how God just wants us to live happy and easy lives. This prayer is going to cause us to be uncommon, uh, be not like the church in America, and to be the church that God actually calls for. And I don't know about you, but I like easy prayers. Okay, I like praying safe prayers. And it is okay to pray safe prayers. It's okay to pray them. You know, God, keep me safe. I want to be safe. All right, God, guide me. I want God to guide me. God, bless me. I want God to bless me. God, help me have a nice and easy day because I want to have a nice and easy day. But when I pray these prayers, I wonder if I'm cheating myself. When I only pray these safe prayers, I wonder if I am stifling the spirit from doing something major in my life. Because I pray these safe prayers because I, I, I don't want to be inconvenienced. I don't want to be pulled out of my comfort zone. I like my Fridays where I just sit in my recliner. I don't have to look at anybody's face. I sit in my recliner and I binge watch whatever show I am binge watching. Like, I do not want that interrupted, okay? Right now I'm binge watching Big Bang Theory. You probably don't care, but that's what I'm, I'm watching right now. And I don't want it to be disrupted. So I pray safe. But like I said, I wonder if we're missing something because one of my favorite verses, and it's from my favorite book in James, James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so I read those verses, and even though I want to have a safe and, and, and fun and inconvenienced life, or not, in, or yeah, um, it, it kind of makes me ask these questions. What am I losing by clinging to my comfort? What am I losing by clinging to my comfort? What am I missing out on because I'm so committed to avoiding pain and grief and discomfort? Could there be something on the other side of praying dangerously that makes everything worthwhile? Could praying the dangerous prayers release me for more than I can even imagine? Because if we pray only for protection from trials, then we rob ourselves of our future maturity. If we only pray safe prayers, if we only pray, God, guide me, God, keep me safe, God, protect me, God, do this, for me, we miss out on our growth spiritually. So if you are struggling with a stagnant faith, have you prayed dangerously? If you are struggling with growing in your faith, have you prayed dangerously? Because when we pray for protection, it can limit our maturity, it can limit our growth. So this prayer is not a safe prayer. It is a very dangerous prayer because if you pray this prayer, God will answer you and you will become frustrated because he answered this prayer. You will become more uncomfortable than you've ever been. Life will be much harder and chances are really good. It will not get easier for you. And so the prayer we're going to be praying this week is God break my heart. Break my heart. Crush it destroy it. Strip me of all of my comfort. Strip me of all of my selfishness. Strip me of all of my, uh, 
selfish de- desires. Strip me of my ease. Strip me of my spiritual apathy. Break my heart. Crush it. And I want to warn you that if you pray this dangerous prayer, God is going to answer. And you may find yourself burdened. You may find yourself grieved and your heart aching over something that burdens the very heart of God. If you pray this prayer, you might lose sleep. Your heart might start to burn with the righteous anger. You might find yourself doing things for other people that just don't quite make sense. And when you do, you might end up facing spiritual opposition or criticism, criticism or even persecution. You will experience pain, discomfort, agony, and in all of your pain, and in all of your discomfort, and in all of your breaking, and in all of your frustration, and on all of your sleepless nights, you will still be able to find joy because you will be blessed as your heart breaks over something that breaks the heart of God. You will be blessed as your heart breaks over something that breaks the heart of God. Of God. Now, before we jump into our text, uh, let's go to the Lord uh, uh, in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love and your grace. God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the challenges that that that, that you have uh, uh, put all throughout your text. God, I thank you for giving us a source that we can go to to learn about you, to be convicted by you, but also God to be challenged and to be grown in in your likeness. Father, as we go through this sermon today, as we study your word, Father, I pray that you will humble us, and God, that you will break our hearts for what breaks yours. So God, be with us today. It's in Shem's name we pray, amen. So like I said, we are going to be in Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah the prophet had a very um, unfortunate nickname, okay? He's known as the weeping prophet known as the weeping prophet. Do cries all the time, okay? But once you understand what's going on in uh, 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 his nation, you kind of understand, okay, well, it makes sense why he is grieving. It makes sense why he is hurting. It makes sense why we call him the weeping prophet. And it's because his heart was breaking over the mess of God's people, which was in turn breaking the heart of God. So to give you a little context of what's going on during this time in the life of Jeremiah is the nation of Israel has been divided into two separate kingdoms. You've got the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is Israel, southern kingdom is Judah. And the people in Judah, they were rebelling against God. The leaders were abusing the the widows. They were taking advantage of the poor. Uh, They would actually sacrifice, believe it or not, little babies to false gods. And God's heart was wrecked over the sinfulness of the people. God's heart was broken over the sinfulness of the people. And Jeremiah was aching on behalf of God. You know, Jeremiah is saying, this isn't right. How can this happen? How can you claim to know God? How can you claim to be God's people, but yet you still behave like this? Why do you claim to be God's people, but yet you are abusing others? You are mistreating those who are powerless. You see, his heart was breaking, and you can see it as we read uh, 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 Jeremiah 8, beginning in verse 18. Now, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, so if you have a different translation, saying basically the same thing. But this is what, what Jeremiah says. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned J- Jerusalem, the, the people ask? Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone. The people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? You see, Jeremiah is in great emotional distress. He is torn between his love for the people and and and, and the reasons for their pain. He's, he's wondering, why don't they get it? Why can't they understand that their suffering, the suffering that they are wondering why God isn't answering, is actually their fault. 
They are blatantly disregarding God and his commandments, which is why God is threatening to destroy them, which is why they are about to enter captivity, why their lives are not being blessed. And so when the prophet says, my grief is beyond healing, my heart is broken, he says, I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and I'm overcome with grief. My heart is crushed. My heart is broken on behalf of the injustices of those who are abusing those who do not have the means or the strength uh, themselves to make things right. My healing is beyond or, or, or my grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. You see, Jeremiah did what he knew to do. This was a guy who preached hell, fire, and brimstone constantly. He knew exactly what to do, what to say, where to go, and how to do it. But yet he saw very little change in the nation of Judah. And he says, my grief is unbearable. My heart is is broken. And what's interesting is he kind of asks uh, uh, in verse 22, is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? You see, Gilead is a, is a city that is famous for its medicines and its antidotes and his uh, uh, hospitals and its medical advancements of saving people's lives. So Jeremiah is asking this kind of rhetorically, but of course, be, be, because you would know, yes, there's medicine in Gilead. It, it's famous for their medicine. It's famous for their healing. It's a famous place. But yet, there is, but what Jeremiah is getting at is he's saying, there is a cure for the spiritual disease that's destroying you. There is a cure for the spiritual disease that is plaguing you. There is a cure for what is wrong with you. There is a cure, and God will heal them. God will heal, heal this nation if they only listen to God, if they only listen and respond and repent and draw closer to God. And Jeremiah is broken, and he can't take much more of this pain, which, once again, it helps us understand why he was given the nickname the Weeping Prophet, because he hurts for the city, he hurts for the people, and his heart is broken for what is breaking the heart of of God. And this isn't the last time that someone will weep over this nation. We read in Matthew 23, verse 37 through 38, as Jesus is overlooking Jerusalem, he is cut to the heart. His heart breaks for what he, sa- for what he sees. In, and, and Jesus says this, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not, not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. You see, Jesus deeply loves the nation of Israel, but their constant stubbornness, their constant rejection of God's warnings are deeply troubling to him. And Jesus desperately, he desperately longs to draw the people of God close for protection. He longs to draw people in for comfort, for peace. But yet they still refuse his love, and that still breaks the heart of God. Jeremiah's heart was broken for God's people, and God used Jeremiah. He used that broken heart to bring his people back to repentance because when you pray God break my heart you may become God's solution to what is broken when you pray God break my heart you may become God's solution to what is broken and so the question is is do you want that do you want that burden do you want that responsibility do you want that heartache because I'm going to be honest, when I wake up, I want the complete opposite. (laughs) I don't want to grieve. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to be inconvenienced. I just want to go through the day with no real big problems. I don't want to deal with heartaches. Okay, I don't want to grieve over anything. But that's why this is a dangerous prayer of break my heart. Because when, when, and let me clarify, when I'm talking about something that breaks my heart, I'm not talking about something that just spiritually annoys you. 
okay? And, and, and I'm not even talking about when you're driving along the road and there's a, a, a person on the side of the road with a sign saying, uh, anything will help, give me money, and, and you just find the loose change in your little cup holder and you, and you give it to them. That's good, that's great, you should do it, but that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is a gut-wrenching burden that consumes your thoughts that doesn't let up and it doesn't go away. It eats at you. It gnaws at you. It consumes you until you simply cannot not act. And to the point where you have to do something because the pain is just so heavy and it just burns inside your heart. And honestly, when you get to this place, the feeling that you have on behalf of God is the opposite of everything that popular culture programs want you to feel, want you to feel. You see, what the church tells you is, 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 is that we want God's blessings. We want easy street. We don't want to struggle. We want to find what is easy, and we just want to do that. The American church has caused us to be comfortable and to not pray these dangerous prayers. We don't have to do uh, uh, something big to experience the blessings from God. You just got to do the bare minimum, and that is it. You just got to go to church one Sunday a month. That's all you need. That's enough. You need to, you know, take your communion. You need to worship Jesus. Maybe even throw up a hand there, okay, a as you're singing. Make sure to tithe, you know, your 10%, but we won't force you to tithe your 10%. Just whatever loose changes in your pocket is fine. Okay, just be, just do the bare minimum, and God will bless you. Now, God can bless you in doing the minimal things. God can bless you with doing little things, but God can also bless you by doing the big things because what would happen, or, or, or God can, can bless us, but what if God's greatest blessings come from God's greatest breakings? What if the most special blessings from God come on the other side of the pain that moves you to, to from self-care to caring about others. What would happen if God really broke your heart for the things that break His? What if God blessed you with the heavenly burden, a divine burden, and a holy hurt? But you know, when I think about it, I like comfort. I do, I do like my comfort. I don't like to deal with problems, but here's the problem. Comfort never moved me to action. Me sitting in my, in my recliner in the safety of my apartment or in the safety of this office, it's never moved me to say, you know, I should probably go to a dangerous nation and do work there. You know, I, it, that, when I'm comfortable, I've never once thought about doing something da dangerous for God. You know, and I, I should probably go do this. I should probably go do this. Nah, I'm too comfortable. Okay, comfort never once moved me to action. It never once called me to go and change the world because I like pain-free days. But you know what? Pain-free days never made me more like Christ. Pain-free days never makes you more like Christ. And you can see hearts breaking all over Scripture. You can see it all over Scripture. We got Moses. We all know the story of Moses. As Moses is living in Egypt as Pharaoh's like stepson, Okay, he is walking throughout the day, and then all of a sudden he sees one of his people being beaten and abused, and, he, and his heart breaks over God's people, and he runs, and he murders this soldier of Egypt, and then he freaks out, and he runs away, and as he is away for a couple years, um, he walks up a mountain, and he comes face to face with a burning bush that's, not, that's on fire, but it's not burning, and Moses is like, that don't make sense, and then the bush is like, Moses, and so he's like, oh snap, it's God. So he goes to God, and, and, and God gives him this impossible task of saying, hey, I have heard the cries of my people. And because Moses' heart broke for what broke God's, he went face to face with the most powerful person in all of Egypt. You see, God broke Moses' heart for the struggle and the oppression of God's people. And because Moses' heart was broken, and because Moses did what God called him to do, Israel was then freed from the captivity of Egypt. 
If we move further on in the Old Testament, we got David, who was just a, a little shepherd boy as his brothers are off on war. And David's dad co comes to him and says, hey, David, how about you go take a meal to the real men who are actually fighting in this war? Go take them food and then hurry back. So David runs and he goes. And as David approaches the, the army, he sees, well, why is there no fighting? Why is there no battling? I'm not hearing, you know, clanking of the swords. But then all of a sudden, he sees this nine-foot dude on the field uh, uh, cursing God, making fun of God, making fun of God's people. And David's heart is, is broke. He's like, who is this Philistine? Who is this guy who's cursing God? Why is no one doing something about it? Why are you guys just sitting there in fear? And, and, and Goliath is constantly just making fun of Israel and making fun of God. And David's like, that is it. Get me a slingshot and three stones. Okay? Get me all this. Because, yeah, he may be big, he may be powerful, but he's too big for me to miss. All right? So I'm going to go with the faith of God because my heart is broken and I'm going to take care of this. And we know the story. He, he gets his little slingshot and Goliath's like, who's this little pip squeak? And he's like, Sha! kills Goliath. And then the Philistines leave, and, and Israel wins uh, 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 that battle. And then we see how David's life, how he becomes the king of, of, of Israel. Maybe there's another character in the Old Testament that we don't really read about, and his name is, is Nehemiah. Nehemiah had a cushy job. Uh, he was the, 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 the wine and food tester of the king, okay? which means like if it was poisoned, Nehemiah just wanted a day where the food wasn't poisoned. Okay, let's just say that. Because if he took the drink and <coughs> died, then the food was poisoned. That was Nehemiah's job. And Nehemiah got word that as the, as the nation of Israel was leaving exile and returning back to their place, that there was no wall, that they were not protected, that there was really no place for them to live. And this broke Nehemiah's heart to where he went to the king and said, Hey, can I, you know, can I stop risking my life for you? and go risk my life for my people? Can I, can I go and help them build? Can I go and help them uh, get secure? And the king said, yeah, sure. Now the thing about Nehemiah, Nehemiah was not a construction worker, okay? He didn't know how to build a wall. He didn't know how to do these things. But yet he trusted in God and his heart broke so much that he went and, 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 and he got, he was very good at organizing. So he got different people to come and build and different people to provide the materials. And because uh, 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 of his brokenness, his brokenness moved him out of his comfort zone to where he could go and secure God's people from invaders. He went and gave Israel their identity Back, and he showed that Israel that, hey, you guys are worthy. Probably the most fa famous breaking of hearts in Scripture that we read about is Jesus. Jesus' heart broke. God's heart broke when, the, when his people sinned in the garden. His heart broke when he saw people choosing the sinful life rather than choosing him. And he saw the brokenness and the depression and the anxiety and the killing and all of the evil that is in the world. He saw it and it broke his heart to the point that he loved us so much and his heart was broken so much that he sent his son to die on the cross. Because sin killed, it separated, it destroyed, it brought darkness and God God's heart broke so much that he needed to, vic to, to fix it. So he broke the body of Christ for us. And because of that brokenness, we are saved. Break my heart. You see, God's greatest blessings come with God's greatest breakings. God's greatest blessings come with God's greatest breakings. Because all those examples tell us the same thing. They have the same end result. God's people were saved. God's people were saved. God's greatest blessings come with God's greatest challenges. So what in our world breaks your heart? What in our world breaks your heart? Is God calling you to respond to what breaks your heart? Because, listen to me, when you pray this prayer, get ready to ache. Get ready to have sleepless nights. Get ready to hurt. Because your heart might break for the unborn. 
It might break for little children in our community who are sleeping on the floor without a bed. Your heart might break for those who are in the foster system, who are lost and don't have anybody who loves them. Your heart might break for the suffering of those who, are, who, who struggle with mental illness or those who are trapped in addictions and they, and they don't know how to get out. Your heart might break for those whose marriages fell apart due to infidel, infidelity and, 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 and that person is just at a point where they can never love again, but yet you can show them that love. Maybe your heart breaks for that. Or it might break for a teen who is struggling with cutting and suicidal thoughts. Or your heart might break for a teenager who doesn't have good parental influences. Or you might struggle for, or, or, or your heart might break for a teen or a person who is addicted to pornography. Who is addicted to something. What is breaking your heart? Because when you pray this prayer, your heart is going to break. And when your heart breaks, when your heart breaks, I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God that on behalf of Him, you care for what He cares for. So thank God, and I hope you'll understand this. And this is our truth. It, it's better to hurt with a purpose than to live without one. It is better to hurt with a purpose than to live without without one. Now, when I first got into ministry, full-time, eight and a half years ago, okay, I had a hard time shutting off the brokenness of people and allowing it to affect me. I had trouble just shutting out because I thought I would get in a, in a ministry, and, and the brokenness of the people that God uh, 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 put me over, I thought I could just turn it off, leave it at the office, and then go home and, 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 and not struggle with it. Well, that wasn't true. And so I constantly, uh, uh, I talked with Bill, and I said, hey, how do you shut it off? I talked with my mom, my mom. Mom, I can't shut off my brokenness for my people. I talked with the professors at my college. I said, how do you shut it off? And they said, you just don't. You don't shut it off because your heart breaks for the people you care for. Your heart breaks for those that he has put over you. When your heart stops breaking for people, that's when you need to get out of ministry. And I'm going to be fully honest with you. The last eight and a half years, I have been miserable. I have never experienced more depression. I have never experienced more anxiety. I have never experienced more sleepless nights than I have in the last eight, eight and a half years. But you know what? I won't change it. Because I grieve for, you know, I grieve for those who, who, who don't know God. I grieve for those who are longing to fill a void of loneliness that only God can fill. I grieve for those who have experienced the love of God, but yet have turned away and turned their backs on God and just completely walked away from the faith. My heart grieves when people would rather listen to what the world says they are rather than listen to what God says they are. My heart grieves for those whose marriages have crumbled and have fallen apart. My heart grieves for those who have lost someone to suicide. My heart grieves for those who can't overcome their depression or their anxiety and they allow it to cripple them and keep them down. My heart grieves for people who, who, who don't understand what love is, but yet they find it in everything that isn't love. But even though I've experienced sleepless nights, even though I'm constantly depressed and always anxious and always broken, I have experienced the greatest blessings through all of that. Yes, the eight and a half years has been miserable, but man, the eight and a half years has just been truly amazing. Isn't that confusing? Because God's greatest breakings brings God's greatest blessings. I have been blessed so much. Of seeing students who have, who, 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 who have parents who are addicted to drugs and, and alcohol, but yet they have been able to overcome that and they have been able to found true love that is in God and they've gotten into the baptistry and they were baptized and now they are doing full-time ministry. I have been blessed by seeing people who, who have no experience with God develop a relationship and allow it to grow. I have been blessed by seeing marriages. I have been blessed by seeing kids come into the world. I have been blessed with friendships. I have been blessed with people who have opened their doors to those in need. 
So yes, I have experienced misery for the last eight and a half years, but I have experienced some of the greatest blessings in the last eight and a half years, and I would not change it for the world. I have been blessed because my heart breaks for what breaks God's. So yes, it's going to be hurtful. Yes, you are going to have sleepless nights. Yes, you will experience depression and anxiety, but you're going to experience great blessings because of it. So if you would, before we sing the song, let's pray together. God, break our heart for what breaks yours. Crush us, Father. Burden us. Make us weep for what makes you weep. Reveal to us where we can be your solution to the brokenness in this world. God, destroy the idols that we surround ourselves with and that we worship and, that, and destroy the comforts that we have taken advantage of. Destroy the very things that, that, that keep us from being your church. God, break our hearts so that your light will shine. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Oh, 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. First of all, um, the survey that we had uh, a couple weeks ago, um, we did look at all those at our last elders meeting, but if you still have a survey that you want to get in, please get it in this week so that we can compile the, the answers to that. Um, second thing I wanted to, to share was um, we said we would tell when everybody uh, agreed to be on the search committee who that committee would be. Um, so I, I've got those names now. Um, Amy is going to be on the, the committee, Kathy, Mana, uh, Michael, um, Kent, Carl, and Joelle. And uh, for those that are here, everybody's here, um, Kent would like to meet with everybody after the service just to figure out when that first meeting is going to be. I um, want to make sure that we get that together. Um, the, the final thing is uh, I was reading through Genesis chapter 24, um, and uh, Abraham wants to, to get a son for his, his uh, or get a, a wife for his son. And uh, so he sends his, his servant to his descendants. He didn't want a Canaanite wife. So when his servant gets to the well, he prays this prayer. He said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show me loving kindness to my master Abraham. And that's kind of what we want to do with this search committee. We want to pray for them to have success. And so with that being said, there's two things. Uh, the elders have agreed that during the first meeting, the first half of that, the elders are going to join the committee just to pray for success. The second thing is I want you guys to also pray for the success of, of the, uh, the search committee so that we find the right person to, to help lead us in what we're going to do. So with that being said, I'm going to lead us in prayer to, to um, lead us out of the service. And then do you have a song? And then we'll have a song when we're dismissed. Father, I... I thank you that you are in control. I, I know that we're a sinful people, we're a sinful nation, and I pray that you will guide us to be a beacon here in Cedar Rapids so that your kingdom will grow. Father, I pray that the decisions that we make, that the decisions that the search committee makes will help to further your kingdom here on earth. Father, I, I thank you that you love us so much that we have a message that's important to share. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Create in me a clean, clean heart. with me yet 
by your power I can change, I can change. You're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me yet. No, you're not finished with me yet. By your power I can change, I can change. You're not finished with me yet. You guys are dismissed. We cannot wait to see you back here again next week. Be sure as you go out to let God break you, to change you for how he wants to use you. Create me a clean, clean heart. Create in me a work of art. Create in me a miracle. Something real and something beautiful.